Chimrip Su. I'm Kim Ton, an English and Khmer speaking tour guide for Chimrip Ongko and surrounding regions. Today, I'm really delighted to be back again in this video, and I would like to show you one more impressive temple of Cambodia, which is located not inside the main group of the temple, but it's outside in the ancient city called Harit Haralai, or present day Rolu. This temple is called Bakung Temple which was a 9th century temple built as a mountain, the first mountain temple in Cambodia. So before showing my video to you, I would like to apologize for any unintentional mistake that would uh, occur in this video. And please give me some of the constructional feedbacks in the comment section below. So I uh, hope you enjoy my video today. So, Bakung yeah, is located at the oh, south of Breko Temple and was the center of the town of Hari Haralaya and was built in 881 AD by King Intravarman I. It is identified as an official state temple dedicated to the god Shiva and the king himself. The temple probably served as a tomb for the king. The name of Bakong was given by local residents in the, the mid-period of Khmer history, but originally it, its name was Indraiswara. The temple of Bakong is built on an artificial mountain to represent Mount Meru, situated at the center of the universe and home of several gods. It is made of sandstone and laterite with some brickwork in the annex buildings. Enter and leave at either the eastern and western gate, but the main entrance is at the eastern gate. And I begin my presentation here and take you through from the east to the west. The first enclosure wall. The land area extends 900 by 700 meters. It is enclosed in a rectangular area by two walls, which represent the mountains at the edge of the universe. Between the two enclosure walls is a moat, which represents ocean around the universe. The wide eastern causeways on east and west sides across the moat are bordered by low seven-headed naga balustrades and which represents rainbows and connecting way between earth and heaven. Behind the naga balustrades are the remains of claws of Garuda, heavenly eagle, stand on pedestals. There is a modern Buddhist monastery decorative with old paintings adjacent to the inner walls and are still actively used by Buddhist monks and Buddha devotees. You may visit the monastery and read the story of Buddha from the paintings on the monastery walls. The second enclosure wall. The second and smaller enclosure which measures 160 by 120 meters, has an entry tower of sandstone and laterite in the center of each side of the wall. Long halls on each side of the second causeway lie parallel to the eastern wall. They were probably rest houses for visitors at the time of construction. Two square shaped brick buildings at the northern east and southeast corners are identified by rows of circular holes with openings to the waist. The vents in the chimneys suggest these buildings served as crematory or house sacred fires. There was originally a single building of this type at the northwest and southwest corners 
but they are completely ruined. Along the causeway, close to the central platform, there are two long sandstone buildings on each side, which open to the east and west. This may have been storehouses or libraries for the, script the scripture of the Veda and other sacred objects. Around the base of central platform, there are eight square brick sanctuary towers. The two on each side of the base are decorated with a heavy coating of stucco. Each tower has four doorways, but only one to the east with an opening. The rest are false doors. Each tower has a stairway on each side guarded by crouching lions at the base. The northeast tower once held a statue of Upma Ganga Maheswara, an image of Shiva and his two consorts. In front of stairways, which gave access to the top tower at cardinal points of the platform, there is a crouching sagat bull, Shiva's vehicle and guardian, the main one at the east, stairway is larger than the other but completely ruined. Central area, base and main tower, and its symbolism. The square shape base in form of pyramid representing the cosmic Mount Meru is 65 meters by 67 meters and was re reconstructed by Maurice Glaze at the end of the 1930s according to methods of anastylosis. It has five tiers which correspond to the worlds of mythical beings Nagas, Garudas, Rasashas and Yatsas and a world of gods. Each has a stairway on each of the four sides flanked by statues of Garuda lions and at the base a step in the shapes of the moonstone remains of small structure can be seen at the base of the stairway flanked by two sandstone blocks which may have hailed script sculpted figures. Large stone statues of elephants, vehicle of Indra god, the god of rain, are positioned as guardians at the corners of the three lower levels of the pyramid. The fourth tier is identified by twelve small sandstone towers each of which originally contained a linga. This level may have been covered with basilisk, which depicted mythology stories, but today only fragments remain. A dramatic scene fragment involving what appear to be Azura or demons in battle gives a sense. These were high quality carvings. The fifth tier is framed by a molding decorated with a frieze of figures barely visible. The sanctuary is square with four tiers and a lotus shaped top. Only the base of the original central sanctuary remains. The rest was constructed at a later date. Perhaps during the 12th century, during the reign of King Surya Varman II, who ruled from 1113 to 1150 in the art style of Angkor Wat. Originally, there was a sacred Shiva Linga called Indraiswara on a pedestal in this sanctuary. As usual, there are four doors of the shrine, with one having an opening and the other closed doors are called blind doors or false doors. Above each door, 
There is a lintel decorated with carvings depicting mythological scenes. A lintel on the east side, whilst the match gives an image of a god with many arms, probably Shiva or a goddess dancing. Another lintel at south is in the worst condition, but it seems to depict gods and demons holding a serpent in order to churn the sea of milk for receiving Amrita that it is the immortality warrior. The West Lintal holds image of the god Vishnu reclining on a serpent Ananta with his wife at the feet, and a lintel on the north door depicts a Kupalmin, Rama and Lakshmana of the Ramayana story lying on the ground wrapped by a poisonous snake. Surrounding the two men are monkeys and devotees weeping. Above them, a Garuda, the heavenly eagle, is flying from the sky to save the victim from the snake. So just to remind you again, Bakong Temple has totally 5 tiers or 5 uh, levels and each level of the temple represents each of the world of all the mystical beings in Hinduism. As the first level or the lowest one is representing the world of the Nagas and the second one is representing the world of Garudas and the third one is representing the world of Yuman or Ratsasa and the fourth is representing Yatsas or the world of demons and the top most level is representing the world of the god or the heaven so thank you very much for your attention watching my video from the beginning to the end and thanks very much indeed for all your support in my previous video hope you will enjoy and have to share this video to your friends and the people you know in order to get the information about the brief history of uh, ancient Cambodian temple. Thank you and goodbye.